All right, guys, here is the Seiko SKX-013, or the mid-size Seiko SKX that we're all familiar with. Here's a 009 for reference, and we'll cover sizes here in a minute, but you can see the lug-to-lug -lug is nearly the same. The rest of the dimensions, other well, the lug-to-lug -lug and the thickness is nearly the same. But other than that, it's a totally different watch. Uh, so Jeff sent this in, a viewer of the channel. He had this one... I don't think he had it done. He purchased it under that My Watch program thing that uh, Mark over at Long Island Watch does. So he bought the SKX-013, had the double dome sapphire crystal with AR coating, and then he had a uh, bezel insert, uh, ceramic loomed installed, and then he had a upgraded bracelet as well. This is the solid end link Jubilee style uh, with the fold over milled class, six micro adjusts. So kind of really steps it up a notch, makes it feel much more premium than on the standard rattly bracelet that the uh, SKX traditionally comes on. Totally fine. I like those bracelets, but these definitely feel more premium. So more or less, I just wanted to kind of share with you guys, and I think I've done this video in the past, but I can freshen it up a little bit so we know what we're dealing with here is for sizes. You know, a lot of people have the question, you know, which one I want depending on the wrist size. Um, so I measure this case at 48, 45, 48, did I say 48? 38 millimeter case, 45 lug to lug, 13 and a half thick, 20 millimeter lug width. This bracelet tapers down to 18. I think the factory one does as well. So those measurements in comparison, these SKX uh, 009 and the 007 and other other uh, like models are 42 and a half millimeter and then 45 and three quarter. So they're almost a millimeter longer lug to lug than the 013. And they're both, they're all like 13 and a half mil thick. And then these have a 22 millimeter lug width versus the 20. And that kind of actually goes for the same thing with that new um, SKX style Seiko, the SRPDs or whatever we're calling the 5KXs. Those are kind of the same thing as like the full size. Now, yet to see if Seiko is going to release a mid-size one. I kind of suspect they won't. Um, I, I think these mid-size or smaller ones, they always sold, but they definitely didn't sell in the numbers that the larger ones do. So I don't think they're going to produce a smaller one. But there are a bunch of aftermarket cases being made now that is a smaller size. So you can buy the case and build it all up if you want and should have drilled lug holes and everything on the aftermarket case. So there's going to be a ton of options out there. This has the 7S non-hack, non-winding movement, same as like the standard SKX. So, and then 120 click bezel. Very nicely done. Now I have modded one of these in the past and when I was taking it apart I noticed that the way these are constructed versus the way the uh, larger counterparts are is totally different, uh, totally different construction method. So it kind of threw me for a loop. Um, I actually kind of prefer the way the SKX-013 is constructed. Makes it a little easier to work on I think. But um, here it is on my seven and a quarter. It actually wears and looks fine, I think. You know, it's definitely smaller when you compare it side by side with the uh, larger SKX, but it's totally wearable on a seven and a quarter wrist, um, but certainly going to be more in proportion if you have a much smaller wrist, even though the lug to lug is nearly the same. Even the standard SKX, the lug to lug is so short, that's why it works on so many different wrist sizes. But if you were wondering, maybe for a female or if you just have a smaller wrist or a child or something like that, then this is a really good looking dive watch. Or if you just prefer the smaller sized case and you have a plus seven inch wrist, um, it still works totally fine. There's no issue with it at all. So, yeah, I have a ton of SKX parts laying around. So uh, I figured I would try to share with you and show you what they look like next to each other. Um, I don't think there's very many colorways of the 013, not like the uh, other SKX models and certainly like these newer ones. So, But if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer or other people in the comments can answer for sure. Um, I'm not sure what Jeff ended up in, into this thing because I know as soon as you start adding mods, it definitely increases. Like the bezel insert is going to be $45. The crystal's probably like $45. And then the bracelet's probably like another $80 or $90 or something like that. So before you know it, a $250 watch ends up being 
you know, $400 or something or more potentially. So, um, you know, be careful with the modding. Make sure it's something that you really want to do um, and make sure you do it maybe tastefully so that way you, if you do go to uh, flip it, that it appeals to most people. And that's the case with this one. This is kind of just like an OEM plus. That bezel insert, the sapphire crystal, and this bracelet didn't change really the fundamentals of the watch. It just didn't made it more premium. That's it. So let me close you out with a loom shot because that's where the SKX shines. So yeah, as soon as you pop that loom bezel on any of these uh, mod watches, it just really makes it pop. I, I'm always a big fan of the loomed, loomed bezels on these guys. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Jeff for sharing this SKX-013, and I will catch you on the next vid.